make progress on. So let's look at the to-do list, lists of buildings, hand mechanic development, and real-time elements. So I think the big one is we did hand mechanic kind of order of operations. That's the big one. So that's taken care of. And by taken care of, I mean, I know what I think I want to do. So that's a good starting point. Um, listings and buildings, I haven't done any of that. And real-time elements, I think actually these hand mechanics fit the real-time elements. So let's let's add the hand mechanics to the main body of the notes, and then we will do what we need to do from there. Um, oh, actually, okay, so, okay. A really bad habit of mine is getting distracted which I think is common for most creatives. So in this case, I'm just going to focus on what I'm going to do. I am putting the order of ops in this spreadsheet. Hand of cards, okay. Order of ops for hand slash card play. Okay. Order of ops is going to be Order of ops, here it is. Please work, please work, please work, please work, please work, please work. What's up, buddy? You have food. Okay. I will explain all this in a moment. Let me just get the formatting here all prettyified. my cat Shakespeare. He is complaining about something. He is an elderly cat and he likes complaining. So he will be a part of the stream today. Okay. This is how re the real-time elements are going to work for the hand management. When you have a hand, you're going to have, everybody's going to have five cards and that, that is not a static number. It will just, most of the time it'll be five, but if you upgrade, it'll be more, but we're going to get into that later. Probably not even today, but just five. Keep five and five five cards in your in your mind. Actually, let's be a little bit more visual about this, being that this is a visual medium. Oh, let's actually use some cards because I have them right nearby, rather than some blank index cards because those are clunky funky. Okay. Now I know you're not gonna be able to see. You know this isn't ideal, but hey, I've got five cards. I'm going to play a card. After I play a card, that card will allow me to do an action. And I'm not saying that the card is going to have a list, like it won't say move on this particular card. It will just be a generic card. Like the cards act as a physical timekeeper. Think of it that way. So they're really generic. They're supposed to be on purpose. So you play a card. Step one, you then take your action. So whatever your action happens to be. Um, I, so I, I take my action. So I move my, my probe from one place to another. Then I draw a replacement card, but I place it face down. So there will be a pile of cards somewhere else on the board, and I will draw from that pile, and I will place them face down in a specified area. And that will be the, my replacement hand. <clears throat> and all of these cards are generic, so just keep that in mind. So they're generic. So they get placed over on the side. They're generic, and they're waiting for me to play. I repeat this action f four times, four more times. So I play a card, take an action. Play a card, take an action. Oh, sorry. Nope. I'm even doing it wrong. Play a card, take an action, draw a card. Play a card, take an action, draw a card. Blah, blah, blah. Until I've run out of cards, right? When I run out of cards, I now get to pull resources. So play a card, take an action, draw a replacement face down. Why does it need to be face down? That's a good question. What was I thinking? Why does this need to be face down? Okay, repeat until you run out of cards. When you run out of cards, actually that's bad note taking, until uh, players run, oh no, 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 because these are until, until you run out of cards. Okay, that can go away. Yay, one less step. Okay, so you then have run out of cards. Now, in the course of your turn, you have a number of probes that are elsewhere on resource buildings. 
you will now that you're out of cards, you will take all of those resources that you are allowed to have um, based on whatever factors. It doesn't matter at this point. We're just saying that you are, you, you get to draw some resources now. You've played all your cards. Congrats. You now get to draw resources because it's too difficult. I was, I was thinking about this this morning. There are things that digital games get to do that cardboard games don't get to do. One of those things is constant flow of resources because in cardboard, that means it's accounting and counting sucks. So no accounting. That means we have to put cram everything into a moment. So these resources are getting pulled. Once you've played all of your cards, you then pull resources. They are added to your pool. And then if there is a first, uh, if um, you don't need to deal with a first player marker, I'll get to that in a second then you will pick up the five cards the new five cards these are the five cards that you had face down these are now the cards you get to play with so if i had my setup with my tripod i would do like a little thing on my table here but i don't we'll get there so um there is a first player marker that moves around the table and the first player marker is essentially designed to break ties because I, I I foresee an issue with I played that card first now you played that card first kind of like there's a common area like in Mars 445 if there's a stack of cards and if I played my card and it's underneath yours my card is the one that was there first as I think this through about how the RTS is going to, to function, I don't know if there are common areas. And I, I know up here, um, uh, something I, I wrote a note about common areas somewhere. Uh, special actions, lots of cards. Um, maybe, maybe I didn't. No? Real-time elements? Spots on the board with generic card? Nope. Spots, yeah, these. So there's like base spot and military spot. Um, actually, these are going to be map actions. So I want there to be a common place where you play cards, and that is kind of your marker of who goes first. Here's the thing, though. It's like if I play a map action to, like, set a target movement and move there, is it really all that important that, like, I'm my guys are getting to move marginally closer than yours? Like, sorry, my cat's digging in the trash can and I don't know why anyway um if like, like there's no difference like it doesn't really matter like what really matters is the idea of if I'm moving to get away from an area and you are attacking me do you gain like how does the timing work there like I don't think the timing is necessarily all that important I think what's important is just a player's ability to have a plan work their way through their, that plan and play through their cards. Seriously, Cat, what are you doing? Hi. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. Um, so I feel like ultimately what the solution is going to be is just when we get there, we're going to have to figure it out as far as what are the things where timing really is important and when isn't it important. Now, why did we get on all of this? We got on all of this because of, there's a first player marker. So I'm first player and you are sitting on my left. You have played all of your cards. And now once you take your cards, you pull all your resources and then you take the first player marker from me and you add it to you. So in the event, I feel like this is just designing something into the game that doesn't add much, but it's important enough to where if it's there, we can use it. Good. End of story. And I spent way too long describing a function that may not even stay in the game. So I also watched Meeple War, uh, a review, I watched two reviews of Meeple Wars to get an idea of, that's the game that uh, uh, Paul referenced on the Cardboard Jungle a podcast. And I, I checked it out. And so I have a good idea of like Fog of War isn't a thing in that game. I feel like Fog of War might be a bit too far. So the thing is, if I'm playing, if I'm trying to build up my base, am I necessarily paying attention to what everybody else is doing until I get out onto the main map? I think the answer is no. So we're going to, we're going to play test. 
um, uh, hold on, uh, playtest with uh, no fog of war to start, add later if need be. That's what we're going to do. The board, the board stays the same, real-time elements. That's what we talked about. And so I guess here's a big kind of philosophical question about real-time versus turn-based. What's the difference between why not just make this a turn-based game? If this is a turn-based game, I feel like there are lots of games that have done this style of game, and they've probably done it better. But there's playing real time like this, it, it creates a sense of urgency. Like if I'm not doing a thing, if I'm not working my like you were sitting across the table from me, you've gone through your hand of cards twice. I've only done it once. So you are actually pulling in resources faster than I am. So I need to start making my decisions a little bit quicker. That's actually something that we really have to worry about as we go along through this process because it could easily get out of hand where you're pulling in resources four to one, three to one, something like that, and that might break the game. So it could be a question of, oh, actually limits. You can you can put limits on, duh. That was uh, limits on resources. Uh, will act as a <laughs> I'm laughing because it's such a it's such an easy solution to the problem I, I I don't know why I didn't think of it it's like okay we'll act as as a, a break uh, to progress for the faster player um, build in a way to give slower players the next two words up oh, this is what i was going to write and this is this is important it's not about giving people a chance it's it's about it's about giving players a sense of it's not pointless if i play this game so it's not about a chance give give slower players a reason to keep playing a reason to get better <clears throat> there are there are a subset of players that will never enjoy a game that's real time they they want to think through what they do and they want to plan and and that's cool more power to you uh, this game isn't for you the idea here is i want to give players a chance to see where they're going plan for it, <clears throat> take actions, and have fun with what they're doing and say, I like the system. I want to dig into the system and figure it out. <clears throat> I don't want them to get annihilated by a faster player. But part of this game is going to be making decisions in real time and, and getting through the progress of the game. So I don't know if that made sense, but we're just going to assume that it did and um, carry on with this little uh, session. So players will have five cards whoa oh players oh okay so let's make let's make a note that the game starts with five card hands really where did oh here it is okay game starts with five card five yeah five card hands with hand size five. All right, game starts with hand size of five. Of five. Just you notice how I actually delete the entire word just to make to make the change. I don't click over. That is a function of working in Excel for a living, because for the longest time I didn't realize that well the way you edit in Excel is you have to just delete everything. And it's, it's a pain, it's a pain in the butt to click around within the, <clears throat> within the details of a cell. So it's easier just to delete everything. Excel has ruined me, but it gave me a career. So, you know, 
You win some, you lose some. Uh, this this is upgradable. I this is going to be interesting. This upgrading thing because it's going to take more actions to get through your hand to play more cards. Is that a good thing? Is it worth staying smaller? Is it? I don't know. We shall see. What are the notes do we do? How many? Uh, how do we keep players? How do we keep players' cards separated? Um, do we need to keep player cards separated? I mean, they're all generic. They're, I still think there are going to be special actions. Did I make that note earlier? Fog of War. Hand size. Need common area for card. Let's, all right, let's do the note here. Um, do we, and or, how do we keep special player cards separated? I don't know. First player token, we cover that. Probably taking it, yep. I'm not not sure yet if it's take or give, but taking makes more sense. If if I'm asking players to remember to move a piece, like to take something away from themselves, nobody's going to remember to do that. But if I tell the person on my left that you need to remember to take the first player marker from me, they're going to remember to do that. Or no, I sh they're more likely to remember to do that. And if they forget to take it, then you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's you can't make sure everybody's doing everything all the time in a game. It's it's just one of those things that's really frustrating as as a designer. Like even in in Gods of Olympus, there's there was a rule <laughs> was where you're supposed to gain ten devotion every time you move into a new hex. Well, we constantly forget to do that, and it's. It's a good sign because you're so engrossed with everything else that's going on in the game, you forget to do it. And so you think, eh, I mean, does it really matter? No, it doesn't. So we took that out of the game. And this is the same exact thing. Like, there's a first player marker that moves around, and it could be important. It probably will be important. I hope it's important. It, it's an interesting it's an interesting idea to me. So, yeah. Moving on. Combat move. Players will pick a spot on the board as a map action that... Uh, okay, we're going to keep this note here, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's not something we need to accomplish today. Players that want to attack, again, we're going to skip that. Not going... Uh, oh, this... I'm going to leave it here, but I'll talk about it. Not going to have control points. So I talked about last time where to kind of hit the market of people that are familiar with RTS games, It's there's like control points involved, so there's population limit. Well, I think this like components are going to be population limit in a game like this so rather than think about the restriction point being how many can I control I think the restriction point is going to be what is reasonable to control because there's a counting like oh I gain 10 food this turn or, or I gain five coins because I have five territories that that's one type of accounting and then another type of accounting can become I've got 40 units on the board and I need to make sure I move them all. That's just nightmarish and nobody wants to deal with that. So I think the number of units are going to be smaller uh, in terms of count. They might just get stronger in terms of size. Like maybe maybe a unit will have five five individuals in it. And as those individuals, like it'll be five hit points. Um, you have to think about the theming that way. Like is one... Is one token on the board like a big dude that has five hit points, or is it a unit that has five individuals in it? I like the idea of doing individuals over a powerful unit. Um, uh, a deck of base actions and map actions. So that was, yeah, base, base, action spot. I think actually the note I want to add here is uh, this is um, multiple spots. Multiple spots um, for each base, meaning each base will have its own spot. 
each base has own spot. Uh, I, I talked about yesterday having a, a, a normal spot for each, like having one spot that everybody would play a card to, but that's not important as far as base actions are concerned. It's just what, what's important is making sure that a player plays a card, takes their action, and then has to draw another card. So that's kind of like the, the timing thing that's required. So um, it's almost like, sure, you can just drop a card, but are you actually taking, like, have you thought about what you want to do? Have you, uh, or are you just kind of rushing your way through? Because if you're rushing your way through, sure, you get to take more actions over the course of time, but are you making strategic decisions that are actually moving you forward? Or are you just making decisions to make decisions? And that could hurt you, it could help you, it could, who knows? But um, there's a level of thought that is, uh, you know, required to do this, uh, I want to say like correctly or the right way, but there is no correct at this particular moment in time. So anyway, base action spots, each base will have its own. You just play a card there, move on with your life. Um, card play order. Okay, good. We made it to the end of the note. So how are we doing on time? We are at 22 minutes. Wow, that took a long time. All right. <sighs> List some buildings. Hand mechanic development, done. With a parentheses in the wrong direction. Done, not a good word, check. Real-time elements, check. List some buildings. Do I have a, do I have a point for buildings? I don't think I do. I don't think I do. Um, here's a, here's a nice little trigger point. Remember this? If you watched the first video, talked about trigger points, like when things happen. So finish hand, that's actually what we ended up doing. That's when you collect your resources and then a, a dump restriction, play a card, draw a face down card one at a time. So actually, yeah, we had already done that. Uh, so, you know, good on us. We, our heads were in the right place. All right buildings all right let's visualize a base we've got the main building we've got tech building we've got we've got let's see Unit building, military building, I mean what I really should do is I should I should look at like a, a tech tree for um, some RTS games and see what they what they have in terms of buildings um, and uh, you, you might be thinking right now, like you, you might be able to just list off a number of buildings and say, why am I not thinking those up? Because I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a little bit more thoughtful about it, um, which is also a cop out way of saying this just isn't coming to me that quickly. But I, I don't want to like, I don't want to stick to like the standard tropes of these are all the buildings that are normally in there. Like there's a cloaker and there's a there's a spy and there's. A, you know, a super weapon, and there's a flying thing, and stuff like that. So, I uh, I'm trying to think a little bit outside the box. Well, I'm also trying to just have this come to me naturally, and just it is it it ain't happening. So, there's the tech building, there's the military building, there is the like, and also like food built, like you know, food, housing. I like. Uh, I, do, do I, I don't really care. It, it's like food and housing, boring. Um, trying to get away from those types of things. Like in, in our diving game, we are, we're not using money. We're trying to abstract money. And it doesn't mean that we're not using it in the background, but we're not, we're not going to be, we're not going to feature it as something that the players are necessarily going to see. So like food and housing, um, uh, you know, it's just, not interesting 
Um, let, I mean, let's just agree to assume that that's going on in the background and do more interesting things. Uh, okay, housing. What else? I think another problem that I'm having is I don't really have an idea of what theme or setting I want to put this in. Um, I did contact Paul on Twitter uh, and ask him what kind of theme he had in mind, and he hadn't thought about it. And so I, his answer was, what was his answer? Um, let's find out. His answer was, this is riveting, riveting television. This weekend we're shooting the, uh, what's that thing called? We're shooting a playthrough video for Mars 445. That's kind of exciting. Paul says he hadn't thought about it too much. He says any historical era, era would work for him. Problem is, <clears throat> historical era is not my strength. I don't know a lot of the details. Um, I don't know a lot of the like. It just, the, a lot of that information is is not secondhand. I, I think one of the joys of working in like a a, a space setting is that really the sky's the limit. <laughs> the sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, Space gives you a lot of freedom when it comes to doing stuff. If you're doing historical era things, then um, there's a level of, there's like cultural things you have to stick to. And there are, you don't have to do anything, but there are cultural things that I would like to stick to. I'd, I'd like to make, like if I'm, if I'm selling grape gum, I want the gum to taste like grape or have a hint of grape. Uh, so, Maybe buildings is not the kind, maybe, maybe I think, okay, this is what we're going to do with this video. This is, this is the part where I was able to, I've shown you the real-time elements that we have. So now it's, it's understood that there is a, a real-time, like everybody's playing cards at the same time. Maybe, I, I mean, I just made that assumption but when you're going through this card order this is all happening at once um, by everybody at the table and then you're doing movements on the board accordingly uh, so there there are the real-time elements and then we also have a hand we all i mean we we have a turn structure the turn structure is up here which i mean it's just the same thing i was just highlighting but you know the turn structure is done Wherever it is. Where did I put it? <laughs> Hands. Seriously? There we go. So we have a we have a turn structure. Now we just have to like fill in the rest and make it make it operate. So or we need to give it um we need to give it a universe in which to operate. So we're we're still very much in the, the mechanical part of, of this build, but I, I think it's I think that's done. I think we now need to start building this world. So to build the world, we need to get an idea of what the world looks like. When we have an idea of what the world looks like, we can then work on the buildings. And then once we have the buildings, we can actually build the theme. We can then marry the mechanics to said theme, and then we'll have a prototypable game at that point. So to-do list. To-do list is to get a functioning, no, I don't even know what that means. Go away. There we go. Functioning keyboard to do number one. How am I forward? Okay, to do, to do three, 10, 17. <laughs> we need to do some historical research. His, Histra, histro, sounds like a superhero or a, no, histra, that would be a, that would be a bad guy, that would be a villain. Historical research and pick a, pick an era. I gotta be honest, I, I, I'm going to end, I'll probably end up somewhere in England because that's, that's my heritage and I haven't done any research on it before, so I may as well, I mean, other than watching the odd youtube video or what i learned in school but i've since forgotten it so this might be a, a nice little trip down history lane so historical research and pick an era um 
apply error to buildings. What I'm thinking about right now is one of the one of the nice things about RTS games is they always had like flying units. And is that something that that needs to be applied here or do we just stick everything on the ground? I mean I feel like the answer to that question is going to be let's just build everything on the ground for the sake of simplicity and then if we feel like we need some more we can add flying units and we may have to change the era. Let's let's do that. Okay, apply era to buildings. Uh, then fletch flesh out the buildings, then prototype. What else would we need to prototype? Other than quantities of like cards, like how many cards we need, not important, but um, like resources. That can be A and B. Doesn't matter what they are. Um, buildings that that's one of the things we got to work on the board we just need to build the board the hand that's just a question of cards and i mean the cards are going to be generic so that doesn't matter special actions i don't need to worry about special actions at this point i think i think we'll be fine just worrying about like can we prove the concept that's kind of what we're going to do with with the alpha proto fog of war we're getting rid of it so we can skip all that the board just make the pieces Real-time elements, we have that. If we can, if we want to get into the more complex stuff, we can. But honestly, there's nothing stopping us other than the buildings uh, from making a prototype for this. And actually, we don't even need to do the the, the theme bit. Um, we can honestly test this as just a, a themeless wonder. But for the sake of, you know, may as well start looking. Okay. So that's it. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, again, my name's Chris Renshaw. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch as TGIK Games. Uh, I host a podcast with Joe and Frank. I do the regular podcast episode on Cardboard Architects. I also do a pubcast episode with Frank. And, yeah, that's it. Thanks for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you next time.